us in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25. And if we move to the end of St. Matthew, then we're dealing with eschatolog eschatological issues, the last day issues. And, and what he does is he brings us to focus upon the things that we're going to be judged about eschatological or last day passages and because it was at the close of Jesus's ministry towards the close of his teaching ministry everything he said was significant to them was was weighty because nobody wants to miss the last words now are you going to stand or are we all going to sit it's up to you I mean I know the tradition of the church <laughs> now I will read I will not start with you and then let you read and then come back later and come on as, as your pastor does I, I'm going to read <laughs> for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one to every man according to his several ability and straightway he took his journey then he that received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents and likewise he had received two he also gained other two but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lord's money after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou delivered unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful of a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two others beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed, and I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath five. Ten. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And if you have no teeth, there shall be weeping and gnashing of gums. <laughs> Amen. I want you to look at somebody like you're angry with them and tell them you got it. Use it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> Eschatological issues end day judgments and the judgment is significant because he's going to literally ask what did you do with your gifts <clears throat> I would open by indicating to you that everybody in this room has a gift There is no one that is in here 
who hasn't been gifted by God. The principle is, is I, I'd say, simple. And that is, if you remember in Genesis, God just spoke some things into existence, and then he put a seed in everything that he spoke into existence. And then, of course, in Galatians, said, what's a man soweth that shall he also reap. And the indication then is, what I have spoken into existence, I have put a seed in it so that man can participate in the prom promulgation of my seed. I spoke some things into existence and I could do a whole lot for man, but I put a seed in everything and let everything have a seed after its own kind so that the man that I spoke into existence can take the seed from what I spoke into existence and by his enthusiasm in planting participate in the creative story. I'm going to involve the man in what I speak into creation by allowing him the ability to have a seed. Now, he does the same thing when you and I are born. What he does is he puts a gift in each one of us. And all of us come in here naked. It's interesting when you consider that Bill Gates was born naked. Oprah Winfrey came in here, she wasn't clothed. She was naked. Ooh. And the only thing I didn't expect you to take it like that. <laughs> the only thing that that naked body clothed was a gift. And it is enormously wonderful to see how God can just put a gift in someone, bring them into the world naked regardless of their family. And over a period of years, watch that gift become their life. When you talk about being gifted, then you have to understand that a gift means nothing if there is no need. So when God puts a gift in you, he turns around and he creates a need. Whenever your gift satisfies the need, you have just found your calling. Because God does not expect you to fulfill a need that you're not called to fulfill. Uh, let, me, let me go there. See, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. Uh, this is going to get really tough here. Uh, and because man looks at the outward appearance, he deals with the pulchritude, and he doesn't deal with the leb or the immaterial personality function. It is God who looks past pulchritude in a splendor, and he looks straight into the heart. I want you to notice something else. When Samuel went down to uh, anoint a son of Jesse, he knew he got the word from God. And yet still he goes down there and when he's pointed out Elab, God said no and he said no to all seven. Well, Samuel's about to leave, but he realizes that, uh, you know, God had to be telling me the truth. So there has to be another one somewhere. Do you have another child somewhere? 
of course, that raises an issue that we will not deal with tonight, and, and that issue is, is it better to be considered and rejected or not to be considered at all? I mean, if the man is down here selecting and trying to make, make a king, I mean, family, please, uh, you, uh, why didn't you all think of me? Uh, everybody else is being considered and you won't even consider me. Uh, the fact is that when they're not being considered by anybody in the family, it further proves who God's choice was. When nobody else would have you, God establishes the fact that he picked you because I put something in you and nobody else can fulfill that need. Uh, when, when, when you understand that then, the key to a prosperous life is finding out which need you fulfill. Uh, there's absolutely no way they could uh, say that I was called to sing. Because I don't have a singing voice. And you cannot be put in a situation where your gift is distorted in order to fulfill the need because anytime your gift and your need are not com and the need is not compatible then there's going to be friction and the more friction in anything is the less optimum it can operate because pretty soon it's going to burn up now there's a difference between burning out and burning up and in many instances, when a gift does not meet the need, it turns around and the individual burns up. And it's Satan's job to try to keep you from getting to the need that God has ordained you to feel. Uh, the issue then revolves around the utilizing of the gifts and the talents that God gives. So he equips us for our lives, yes, and he gives us a power of a gift that will gratify us here and will satisfy him there. Uh, the gift that God gives is not just for its eschatological uh, background, it's not just for that finality. The gift that God gives is to gratify and satisfy your life here and turn around and he will reward you there. When he speaks in the last day, the question will automatically come up, what did you do with your gifts? Uh, but now it's interesting because oftentimes situations in our lives right now ask us the very same question. If on any given month you can't make your bills, then of course your bills are asking what are you doing with your gifts uh, i'm gonna talk to somebody in here tonight amen uh, on on any given day when you need a car to drive and the car you have is broken and you can't get around and don't know how you're going to make it to work then of course life is going to ask you what are you doing with yourself i know many of us have had to ask ourselves what's going on with my life uh, here i am with kids to go to school and i don't have what it takes to make them comfortable i don't have what it takes to give them a special lunch to go on a special trip and i know how horrendous it is to be with a group of kids and you're the only one without anything and here I am trying to raise a child and 
don't have the ability to raise a child now that's a judgment it's not eschatological but it's a present judgment because the situations and the demand of life is going to force you to find what God has placed in you in order to make your life work oh I'm gonna preach this thing tonight I'm gonna talk a little bit you see so the circumstances of life will ask me this question and what God does now is he gives me these little judgments in order to direct and align me to the proper destiny that he has called me for he uses the little judgments the little lack here and there so that I might learn to utilize who I am in a better sense so that I can walk in the gift of God because if I walk in the gift that God gives me I don't have to look for somebody else to take care of me because I can take care of myself through the gift that God has placed in me so the gift then makes your life work and when your life works that gift glorifies God because all God says is look at my child I put him in the world naked with everybody else but I put a gift in that child and I'm gonna watch that gift that I placed in him make him glorify me for every time he moves to another level it's because of the gift I put in him so he doesn't only have to clap his hands to praise me all he's got to do is walk in the gift I gave him and that will give me glory oh I feel something pushing me here uh, and so the gifts are given for a reason not only to bless God but for you to be blessed by the gift that God has given you so the proper use of my gift glorifies God and puts food on my table anytime I use it right and I optimize what God has given me it gives glory to God for the angels are looking at a little fellow who came in here naked is going to leave naked but between the nakednesses God used the gift to make his life work for him oh I feel like preaching here uh, when you get up in the morning I might tell you this later but when you get up in the morning you thank God for two things you thank God for Jesus which is the best gift that God could give you and then you thank God for you because you're the next best gift that God has given uh, the parable now is separated from the parable of the servant and the parable of the bridesmaid and it's with the word gar and what it says now is you see and when you see you see from the Greek it connects the parable with the preceding two it's saying it is exactly like the parable of the bridesmaid and the parable of the servants he uses the expression going away on a trip and what it is is a figure of speech for the interim between the two advents the first advent is he comes to call servants and the second is he comes for an accounting so now we begin with discipleship and then we move into judgment I called you and now I'm going to reckon what you have done with my calling now the first thing he does is he summons his own servants which means that the servants don't belong to themselves so that means now you don't belong to yourself and he, oh God he must be talking to believers because they are his own servants so this has nothing to do with sinners which means the one who buried the talent was still his own servant he was a believer and what he's saying to us is we are not our own I don't belong to myself so because I don't belong to myself I can't live any way I want to if I belong to him then I have to give him reckoning for how I used me I don't answer to me for me I answer to him for me because I don't belong to me I belong to him and now the thing that gets me is he gives me now his goods so 
I don't belong to myself and the goods he gives me does not belong to me well you ought to understand that you don't really anything belongs to you you're coming in here naked and you're gonna leave naked you're not gonna take anything with you which means that you're borrowed goods anyway and God just sets you in the world with a gift to see how you handle what belongs to him uh -huh. it's, it's his now can, can I take it further now now to one he gives five talents and another he gives two and another he gives one and the Greek here is hekasto and to each according to their unique ability which means now that God has surveyed the situation he has checked out your intellectual cognitive energy he has checked out all that you are and he has decided to give you one gift to give somebody else two talents to give somebody else five he didn't do it arbitrarily I mean he didn't just by hocus pocus or cast some dice and decided that you were the one to get five and you were the one to get two no he looked at your ability to handle it and he gave it to you according to your ability he didn't do it with some kind of happenstance so when you look beside you at somebody with five or somebody with two somebody with one you have no complaints simply because they didn't determine the level of giftedness that they had it was God who determined it uh, can I take it further so now I'm a glass full I'm, I'm a glass full and beside me there's a pitcher full and beside me there is a tub full and beside them there is a lake full and beside there's an ocean full now there's no reason for the glass full to be jealous of or envious is the word of the envious of the pitcher full envious of the tub full envious us of whatever else is full as long as you're full you can't hold no more water and I feel something helping me here I'm trying to behave you see instead of working your gift till you get full you're sitting over there wondering about the guy who's got five gifts but you can't handle five gifts you can handle only one so if you're full you're just full and give God praise for the handiwork that he's placed beside you oh I feel like preaching now see 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 nobody ought to be envious of anybody else because if you are operating within the parameters of your ability then you ought to thank God for what he has done for you and give him praise for what he's doing for somebody else but don't sit around and fret yourself about what somebody else is doing when you ought to shake yourself and get up and fulfill your own destiny oh, can I take it first Further. and don't sit down and decide that your plan is to get into somebody's world who's doing something when you're not doing anything with your gift at all if you shake yourself operate in your gift folk won't be doing you a favor they'll be looking at you eye to eye face to face and when you come up in my world you're not coming here because I need you you are a benefit but not a necessity I don't know must I preach this thing here tonight oh god and so and and so now to each his own because each plays an important role in the doctrine of grace gifts each of us is unique we are all idiosyncratic and we are a uniquely crafted gift when you look at the word talent to prove a point it was the greatest unit of accounting in the greek money that's talent and and a talent is about uh, 10,000 denarii to understand understand denarii now you go to the parable of the vineyard of the workers in the vineyard where they came early in the morning and he gave them a denarii 
and then he gave those in the evening a denary to show that grace is not fair first shall be last last shall be first the Lord just turned the line around you know that's what he did but a denary is regarded as a fair day's wage in fact it was a copious wage because knowing Jesus he was extremely generous and if you notice nobody turned the job down because the money was copious it was a fair day's wage now the individual who had one talent then had 10,000 days of wages and which means now if he doubled it he would have money for a lifetime the fellow with two talents now has if he doubles it he has two lifetimes of wages which means now that fellow can look to legacy and to posterity the guy who has five talents now this guy if he doubles it he has five lifetimes ahead of him I was sitting out with August Bush the fifth and I said to him one night I said man how does it feel to spend your great 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 grandfather's money he said bishop it's not like that so they started me sweeping the floor and I came up through the ranks like everybody else that ever worked there so I really regard whatever's there as me working for it I don't see myself spending his I see myself spending mine the whole point is that God intends to take your talent and take care of your children and take care of your grandchildren and take care of your great-grandchildren and your great-great-great-grandchildren because he sits back and says I put one talent in that person and it took care of them a lifetime I put five in this person here and it's taken care of their great-great-great great grandchildren which means your picture will be up on a mantle over a fireplace long after you're gone and your your posterity will say that is my great 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 grandfather and everything you see around here he started it because God put a talent in one person and turned the generation curse all the way around oh I feel something pushing me here uh, the excitement then of the saint is to find what God has gifted him or her to do that's the excitement because your work might seem small to you but it's immense to the Lord because he uses this to determine how folk around us are blessed I was coming here a while ago and I was thinking of servanthood and understanding that the servant is the one who is working in order to sustain and to give value to the others anytime God has put you in front of some people he has made you a servant and what he wants you to do is work who you are and work with everything you have in order to bless somebody else because in blessing with that gift goodness and mercy follows you you can't serve God and he not serve you uh, I might as well preach now I'm gonna have church uh, so now immediately the servant who received five talents immediately he moved out and went to work with them and he won five more the two talented did the same the word immediately in the Greek now is the beginning of the sentence it's set there for emphasis and what it says is his immediate move was based on how he felt about the gift he was given his attitude towards the giver if I understand who is giving me the gift and I respect the one who is giving me the gift then I'll do something with the gift he gave can I preach like I feel it when you understand being gifted understand that somebody paid for something you were given I think about my kids going to school and I paid I had one at Cornell University that was 27,000 before the perks I had another at Claremont that was 28,000 before the perks 
Texas. My daughter, thank God, she went to University of Texas. And that didn't cost nearly as much. Now notice with me, I am providing the gift. I am writing the checks. If you respect the check I wrote to you, you will not be smoking marijuana all night long. If, I, I wish somebody would understand me. I can write the check but I can't study for you. You have to let your character surround my check and get a degree out of the school. Can I preach to you like I feel it? God has written the check, but you have to let your character surround the gift that God has given you and push your gift to the maximum because when you push your gift, if you say, Lord, I appreciate the fact that you gave me a voice and I'm going to sing until the devil gets mad. Because if you got a gift, the devil can never keep you manipulated and controlled. Uh, I feel something pushing me now. If you notice now immediately, which means there's an excitement because I've discovered what God wants me to be. And the excitement now has completely enveloped my mind and now my cognitive energy my intellectuality my characteristics and my development is to bring out the best that God has placed in me I don't have time to fool around with folk who are going nowhere the midnight crowd that likes to hang out and have nothing to do and and where are you what's going on why why we don't see you anymore oh I know why you don't see me here because I have discovered my gift and, and my gift is not just to sit here and be a motley fool wasting time because I need time to operate in my gift and as long as I sit here fooling with you I will never amount to anything but be right here crazy I'm glad I got a gift this gift is driving me and motivating me so so there are three verbs here. He moved out and went to work and won. All aggressive. You can't be gifted and be passive. You got to be aggressive. Because the power of your blessing is not in your passivity. It's in your action. If I'm gifted, I got to shake myself. Get up and move out. I got to move out. I can't stay in this crowd any longer. I can't hang around this family any longer if it ain't going nowhere. I got to move out out because it's my gift that's going to take me out of poverty into wealth. It's my gift that's going to take me out of depression into joy. It's my gift. Have I told you to touch your neighbor yet? Uh, we'll do that later. We'll do that. Uh, one, one writer says, I think it's Professor Dale Bruner. He says, waiting for the Lord is not for Matthew a fact of religious inwardness, nor of unique fervor, nor even of prayer. Now, here's what the writer said. Waiting for the Lord, I quote, uh, is not for Matthew a fact of religious inwardness, nor of unique fervor nor even of prayer. It is an active engagement that mobilizes the believer in the invitation to risky initiatives, unquote. When you know you're gifted, you don't sit around just on your knees all the time. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to get up off your knees and with your expectations, Understand that your gift is God working through you, not just working for you. Um, 
You see, we have come to the place where we're trying to give folk the impression that God will just work for you. But Jesus says, I got to go, that the comforter will come. Because as long as I'm here in the flesh, I'll be working for you. But when I come back in the spirit, I'll be working through you. And I'd rather somebody work through me than work for me. Because you might leave me and then there goes my four. But if I'm with with, the with is still with me when the four is gone. Uh, work through me, Lord. Use my hands to lay on the sick. Use my mind to gain wealth. Use my talent to open doors. I ain't waiting for somebody to work for me. I can get up and do it myself. I feel a breakthrough coming. See, the strength of our faith is exhibited in the intensity by which one works. And what it does, it corroborates James when James says that faith without works is dead. Because see, such a faith is dead in the sense of ineffectual. And when you place the Greek phrase at the end of the clause for emphasis, it modifies faith, not dead. What it says is faith alone or faith by itself. You're sitting in a church and you're real pious, real sensitive contentious you're awfully religious but you're not spiritual because there is a gift inside of you that God has placed and, and sometimes you go through difficulties and many times we do and when you go through difficulties you have to understand that there is a revelation to the difficulty you see the man who was born blind for instance the disciple says well why was he born blind did he sin because traditionally they place blame on anybody who was in a serious circumstance and they suggest that the individual brought it on himself but here's what Jesus said he said no that's not the reason he didn't blame the man didn't blame his parents neither did he blame God Jesus very tactfully said that this man is born blind that the works of God might be manifested in his life then he said something that is key to us work while it's day for the night cometh when no man can work now that means that the work of God is seasonal which means that your gift has a season when it will be optimized don't miss your season <laughs> I'm sort of scared of this. Uh, don't don't miss it. You see, uh, what what can I can I can I just can I just preach any kind of way? Now 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 what what they tell me is this. They tell me that the temptation of the young is lust. They tell me that the temptation of the middle age is ambition. Then the psychologist tells me that the temptation of the elderly is bitterness. Uh -huh, can I take it? Now they tell me that the, all of it is associated with lust. They say that uh, the, the middle aged individual who has ambition is the lust of power. And then the elderly who is now bitter is because they have missed anything that they wanted to have anytime you sit around and you wait for other people to deliver your life you generally end up with bitterness because folk ain't trying to give you anything most folk are trying to take what you have uh, so you can't sit around looking to a lot of takers to give uh, I wish I could get somebody to grasp this uh, you've got to move by your own strength and understand that God has given you the power to take your situation wherever he placed you he says I need you to replenish I need you to subdue and I need you 
to multiply. If you haven't multiplied, you haven't done anything. And anytime you got an obstacle in front of your face, it's only to prove how strong you are to bring it under your subjection. I'm gifted to subject poverty to being under my feet oh, I feel it here give somebody a high five and say neighbor you're too gifted to be borrowing money I feel it I'm going to preach this thing. Faith without works. You see, you have to understand the manifestation. Because now he went and he healed the blind man. And when he healed the blind man, it was a manifestation. Uh, because he healed the blind man, it was now manifested. Because it was manifested didn't mean it was revealed. Uh, can I go over that again? Because it was manifested manifested didn't mean it was revealed and the reason why is the Pharisees and the haters saw it differently from those who knew who he was you see the gift of God will bring two groups into your life it will bring haters and it will bring congratulators uh -huh. now when God when God blesses you and he manifests your blessing look always for the haters uh, can I preach it like I feel it uh, so now here comes my sister here comes my sister and she she drove up in a, oh just a wonderful BMW just one of those six series seven series and 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 she had on a mink just hanging from here all the way down to her feet and and oh man she had on those uh, uh, what kind of Manola yeah Manola whatever that blonde or some blanic or some and uh, theory McLeur and 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 of course she walks in the church with her head up high now something was just manifested <laughs> the work of the Lord was manifested Manifested. But now the hater looked over and says to her, says to her friend, I always knew she had a man somewhere. I knew somebody was taking care of her. Uh, honey, it's been manifested, but it ain't been revealed. Uh, that wasn't no man that did that for her, honey. That was she and God. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost <laughs> shake somebody's hand like you're gonna shake it off and say neighbor that was God and I <laughs> that was me working my gift <laughs> don't get mad over my Rolls Royce that was me working my gift oh I feel mm -hmm. <laughs> and so now this faith without works y'all sit down we we got a little more to go we <laughs> faith without works that is faith by itself is no more living faith than a corpse without breath is a living person you see sometimes we take works and we want to add it as something extra but works is not to be viewed as an added extra any more than breath is to be taken as an added extra to a living body I breathe naturally faith and works go together as life and breath go together the former cannot exist without the latter you see we have moved into a time when all we talk about now is faith but we're not talking about the individual with faith being empowered to operate in the faith they have God's not gonna bring it to you I have never in my life with the millions that I've given I have never received an envelope a postmark from heaven with a check in it uh, I've never they didn't mail one to me maybe they mailed one to you what God said to me is I already put in you what it takes to bring everything around you and if you take it and put it after my service one day you look up and say how did all this get here because your gift 
glorifies me but it takes care of you I might as well have some church the professed believer then cannot see a need and stand back don't ever run from a need that you fit because the need that your gift automatically fits that now becomes your calling so now you're looking at the need and your gift is alive now you step out by faith and you declare this is where I ought to be now you don't have to see financial remuneration because when you have a gift that fits the need it's something that you will do if you never got paid I feel it here because it drives you from the depth of your spirit and then you're comfortable with it and you do it naturally that means if I woke you up at 3 in the morning you can operate immediately in your gift if you come home tired falling out you can operate immediately in your gift you don't have to pump it up you don't have to get nervous all you got to do is open up and it'll flow right out of you because that's God using you to meet the need oh I feel the Holy Spirit in here I feel God's got a secret weapon out here that's getting ready to explode in this 21st century generation because your gift is getting ready to come to the surface God's just been working on your character so that when the gift begins to bless you you can handle it I feel it here there is no passivity in the grace of the gift the only passivity is when you were given the gift after that it's all going after it and folk got the nerve to say you're high-minded that ain't nothing but the devil I am minded to use my gift to its optimum proportion maximize the moment I I ain't trying to wait around here for somebody to give me the go-ahead I'm ready to go once I understand that this is what God wants me to do and because I respect the giver because I'm so glad he chose me I'm getting ready to do everything you want me to do and do it with all my might my zeal is to optimize my gift my zeal is to express who I am and I'm not going to let people who are less gifted come running by me because I'm scared Let's give somebody a high five say stop being scared get out on your gift and give God the glory I feel like preaching in here that's why I heard the writer say what shall I render unto God for all of his benefits towards me I will take oh, you got to know how to take when God has given you something the only thing you can do with it is take it and I got to run with it because I need to work it since I got it now if you understand this then let's take a little look at the unfaithful servant the first thing he did was he had no thrill I feel like preaching in here touch your neighbor say are you glad to be who you are are you glad to know God's got his hand in your life are you glad to have been called by God because when you're glad about who you are it moves you to another level and dimension I don't want what you have but I want everything that's mine and I've got something on the inside that's just raring to come out so I ain't got time to hide anything it's time to expose it can I preach like a fillet it's time to come out of the closet and let folk know I have wrestled with the bear and I have wrestled with the lion and if God put an anointing on me I'm ready to take the challenge I'm 
ready to step out because I'm not hiding anything. Can I preach like I feel it? When others are building, he went away. When others are moving out working, he's over here digging a hole while others are doubling what they got. He's got his buried because he had the wrong attitude towards the one who gave him the gift. If you love the one who gives you the gift, you'll work for him. If you love the one who anointed you, you'll work for him. If you love the one that called you out of darkness into marvelous light, you'll say like Isaiah, here am I Lord, send me. I feel like preaching in here. Give somebody a high five and say neighbor, the devil wants me to bury my gift, but the devil is a liar. I've let other folks attitude dig a hole for my gift. I've let other folks attitude dim my vision. I've let low self-esteem dig a hole. I've let them wayward friends dig a hole. I've let love relationships yeah that were going nowhere to dig a hole for my gift. Later for romance. I got a job to do right now. I ain't got no time to be chasing no woman. I feel like preaching in here. I feel like lifting him up. I feel like having him. I feel like giving God the glory. Touch your neighbors and neighbor. I ain't got time to hang out with folk that's doing their thing. I need time to do my thing. I need time to work out my gift because at the end of the day all you're going to do is name drop but name dropping ain't putting nothing in your pocket it ain't putting nobody in your church I feel Holy Ghost I feel like preaching how many holes have we dug because of our past failures what we think will last forever they ain't lasting forever how many holes have we dug because of our family's judgment of our ability to succeed it's one thing to dig a hole but when you bury what God gave you and now you got to dig it up again if you can find where you buried it some of us need to find ourselves get back up and shake ourselves and say I got it and I'm getting ready to use it touch somebody say work it work it work it work it work it work it I feel like preaching in here work it work it till it becomes a new house work it till it becomes a house in Miami work it till it becomes a better car work it till it becomes a yacht work it till it becomes a plane don't let anybody tell you that you ain't got it pull on your neighbor say I know you got it I can feel it in the atmosphere I know you got it I see your anointing I know you got it look what God has brought you through I know you got it look what you have survived but it's time to get up shake yourself and tell the devil I'm getting ready to work it I'm gonna work it till the devil go crazy I'm gonna work it till I learn I'm gonna
work it. Touch two people. Say work it, 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 work it. Work! Work that church! Work that business! Work that song! Work! It's your time. Your man. I ain't sorry for you. Cause you already got it. This is not, this is really not a house of pity. It's a house of praise. And when you're moving in the gift, don't walk in your second calling. Walk in your first calling. And I promise you this, when you're out of your calling, 80% of your effort most likely won't give you 20% returns. But when you're walking in the gift that God has given you, 20% will give you 80% because that's how God is I want you to take somebody's hand Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. You don't and I don't have to worry about the increase. That's not my job. Mine is to plant, the other man's is to water, and God always takes care of his. Where there is no planting, don't make sense to water. Now that's the relationships now that the bishop is talking about. Plant water, and the planter and the waterer, we've done ours. Now God gives the increase. I'm closing. The fellow who needs the car, but he has no money to get the car. And somebody comes by and says, you know what, I'm, I've got this Mercedes here and I've run into some trouble. I, I just need somebody to give me, it's worth about 70,000, but if you give me, I'll sell it to you for 50,000 or 40,000, but I need 40,000 cash. The guy who has five cars in his driveway and got some cash say what? Uh, here's 40,000 right here. 
Give me the note. Give me the pizza. Well, he doesn't need the car. Because he's got five more. The fellow who needed it but didn't have the cash, he just missed the deal of a lifetime. To him that hath, more shall be given to him that hath not the little he has shall be taken away the question now becomes is God unfair and based on the premise that we opened with the answer is a categorical no it's not unfair why because they couldn't handle it anyway. So why let it go to waste? I say to every person in this room, don't look to the left nor to the right. Look into your own heart. You are gifted. And as I close in prayer, don't let character defects keep you from optimizing your gift. Because gift is precious. It's precious to be gifted. And Satan can't mess with your gift. No, you, you, we tell people, don't, don't use it, you lose it. He didn't lose that, he had to bury it. He, he got judged for it eschatologically at the last days, but he didn't lose it. He didn't lose it. It was buried. The gift and calling of God is without repentance. He won't take it back, but he's going to judge you for it. But he doesn't have to judge you eschatologically. Every month you're going to be judged for it when you got to pay some bills. Every you're going to be judged. So you got to make adjustments to find your calling. Satan can't get to your gift because God gave it to you before the foundation of the world. But what he does is he messes with your character. And you go through some things. A man said to me once, I was flying home on some plane, he said to me, why do the ball players, a whole lot of folk that have made big money early, lose it? And don't have nothing in their latter days. And I said to him, real simple, sir. I said, what it takes to get it is what it takes to keep it. And when a person gets it but has no clue but when a person is given it and has no clue how to get it they lose it what you have gone through for so long is simply God developing your power so that he can say to you oh you good and faithful servant enter into the rest of our Lord into the joy of our Lord and I'm going to make that very plain as I pray every time you can work that deal out with the bank for your next move every time you can acquire what you need for your life to work anytime you can go into any of these cities and buy up apartment buildings you have entered into the joy of the Lord. Anytime you can go into Neiman Marcus and come out, anytime you can reach in your pocket and throw out a black card, you have entered into the joy of the Lord. Anytime you can write a hundred thousand or million dollar check to other people 
Anytime you can build $50 million academies across the street from your church, you have entered into the joy of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, you have challenged us, you have entertained us, you have tickled us, you have inspired us, motivated us. You have informed us and instructed us that we are gifted and you're looking for something from us. Lord, you didn't upbraid the man who came bragging to you that you gave him five, he came back with ten. You didn't call it boasting. You commended his work. Send your commendation out here now. And speak to the faithful in whatever city they are in, whether the city's big, whether the city's small. That does not determine faithfulness. Speak to those who have moved out and let them know right now in their spirit don't be discouraged. I've made you ruler of a few, now I'm going to make you ruler over much. And I speak that right now. And not only to the preachers, but to every one of us who are living our lives on a day-to-day -day basis, just trying to get through. Show us how gifted we are and cause us to move out and work it. And next year, this time, when we walk back into this place, we would have doubled everything that you have put in our hands. Yes! Yes! Somebody loose your hands and declare, I will double it. Whatever God, I will double it. Oh, I feel caught in here.